I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, and you probably already know, when sheds are actually dropping in your area, when the antlers are falling, and uh, when would be a good time to go out and actually look in the woods. And I think a lot of people jump the gun too early. They're out in the woods too early, and there's a couple reasons you don't want to do that. There's a couple reasons you don't want to get in the woods before the antlers are actually on the ground. And uh, so really, uh, premature shed hunting could, could hurt you a little bit. And you first have to figure out that timing for your area. And I find some generalities that, that really work and it's pretty interesting. What I find is that if sheds are dropping early in your location, for example, a lot of northern regions that are socked with winter weather, winter temperatures, snow, and that stress, overall winter stress, and then that lack of food source, quality food source, maybe it's in wilderness areas, big woods areas, a lot of those antlers are dropping early. Now when I'm on client seasons, that's when I'm finding sheds. I love finding sheds on client parcels. It's something I keep an eye out for. We're scouting bedding areas and back in the woods anyway, so why not? Um, and so over the years, I've developed a little bit of an eye for trying to find them, and I love doing that. And what's interesting, I love my Michigan trip in early February that takes place, end of January every year, because if I'm in that Big Rapids areas, which is there's Michigan map and Big Rapids on the west side of the state, then um, I have a lot of clients that might be up towards Traverse City, towards Claire, Gladwin, in the middle of the, the state. And when you get into areas that are away from ag, and you're in those big woods areas in Michigan, and that extends to northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, upstate Pennsylvania, New York, um, you can go all the way across the north area, North Dakota, then a lot of antlers are dropping early. And I find a lot of antlers are even dropping the end of December in through January all the way through the end of January. So when I have that client trip in February, then I'm looking and finding a lot of sheds in Michigan and found three this last trip, uh, which I was happy with that. What's interesting, when you find antlers dropping earlier in a given location like that, then the window of shed opportunity and those antlers dropping to me is a lot tighter. Sure, it might vary by antlers are dropping the end of December through the end of January, end of February, but they don't vary by one year they're dropping in the end of December, the next year they're dropping in March. Um, the conditions that make those antlers drop, the overall stress, the uh, lack of light, the, the breeding that takes place at a very narrow window, so the testosterone levels are low, there's so many different, the lack of food, the lack of quality winter cover, the heavy winter, the heavy snow, there's a lot of conditions that take place across the country, no matter where you live, that dictate that those sheds drop at a, at a certain time. And when they're dropping early, that window is usually typically a little bit shorter. Now you need to be mindful of that window in your area too. When we're in Southwest Wisconsin, where we're at right now, it looks almost like Northern Michigan, a nor Northern area right now. We're getting just slammed lately with uh, temperature and minus 40 degree actual temperatures and a lot of snow. The variance of shed dropping here a lot of times sheds are dropping maybe in late January, mid-January, and if they're on those injured bucks or highly stressed whitetails and, and bucks, then those antlers are gonna drop a little bit sooner. But I've seen uh, bucks holding still around here in early April, and I've seen that in a lot of these Midwest areas where there's a lot of ag and there's a lot of food, and sure, we get some heavy winters, but it's not making them that stressed out that much more. I have another video about how whitetails survive the winter and really it's not as bad as you think in some of these locations compared to others. And when you have areas like this where sheds will drop between typically the end of January, early February, all the way through early April, then that is gonna be consistent from year to year. And of course, that area in these more, these areas that have better ag, they have better food sources, they have these hills where they can get out of the winds, the winters aren't as bad as up north, then you'll see that variance for shed drop extend to two months instead of two or three weeks. A big difference in these locations. Now all that being said about the timing in your area, and if you're south you can have those long stretches too where they're dropping in over an extended period of a couple months. The best time to go on your property, especially if you have small properties, especially if you're searching small properties, is that time where you think you've already hit peak. And I would guess around here, our peak shed time, let's say is the end of February to early March. I can expect that a reasonable number, uh, over a majority of the sheds and the antlers have dropped since that time going into early to mid-March. Then if that peak is at the end of February, then I wanna start looking for sheds on the backside of that peak. So I'm gonna look for antlers 
the end of middle of March, the end of March, maybe early March at the earliest, because all you're gonna do is kick those deer off your land. And so typically this time of year, if they're in their winter habitat and you kick those bucks off the land, especially those older ones, why would they come back? They're gonna go somewhere safe. And if they find someplace safe, that has thermal protection, snow hindrance covered by conifers, maybe some winter food sources, and they're not disturbed, then they'll probably stay and they'll stay in those locations. I think a lot of areas collect an unfair amount of sheds just because people are getting into the woods early all over the place, pushing these bucks, and now these bucks finally settle into a certain area where they can count on every year and where they can go to and not be pressured. And then those antlers stick in those locations and people aren't finding those sheds because they've been, been pushed off the land. So always start looking at the peak or at least the back side of the peak. Um, start looking for the sheds there. Keep those bucks on your land until that time. But it's not just about finding those antlers. I have a real love for whitetails and all things whitetails. And one of those things um, I have a, a, a real, that I'm re very aware of is a lot of northern areas where whitetails are socked into the yarding areas and they're trying to conserve energy. Worst thing you can do into some of those northern yarding areas is to go into those areas prematurely, let's say in January, February, while those deer are still trying to conserve stress and push those deer and add a lot of stress to their daily lives and take energy away from their energy that they need in their tank to survive that winter. And that really takes place with a lot of younger deer, so small does and then those fawns and even yearlings, those deer that uh, they can go in with a full tank into the winter but that tank is depleted very quickly. For example, a mature buck and a mature doe, they are hardly ever killed by winter severity. And that's, that's a fact in these northern areas. And that's because they can go in with a, a smaller tank of energy and they can conserve that energy. Bergman's rule where you have the, the size of the animal for the same extremity dictates that that animal can conserve energy and use energy at a smaller rate. So those big animals that go into the winter with half a tank, like a rutted out buck, he can survive winter and rarely be killed by winter severity because he still has a lot of energy in the tank compared to other deer that aren't actually that much smaller than he is when you consider the whole size of the animal and the amount of energy that they conserve. So going into yarding areas and going into winter areas, that's why out west for elk and mule deer areas, they have, uh, you can't go into some of those areas until a certain date because they want those animals to conserve energy. Even Minnesota um, snowmobile trails and snowmobile trails in a lot of northern areas, they rerouted snowmobile trails around yarding areas so they're not going through yarding areas. And every time that snowmobile goes by, that heartbeat goes from 100 to 200 or whatever the rate is, burns energy and that's taking days and hours of life off that animal on the back end of a heavy winter. So relate that to shed timing, think about that. It's not all about finding antlers. You're gonna find times where you just don't need to go into the woods in those northern areas, wait for the winter to, to, uh, to melt, the snow to melt, and get into that at a safe time for whitetails. And at the same time, I think that's gonna match up great with the timing you have for finding sheds and making sure you maximize the number of sheds that you find on your property this winter.